everyone. I'm Charlene Briner, and you're watching Capital Update. We're joined today by Representative John Hi, Benson. How are you? We've been talking a lot about the state budget. We've been talking about the bonding bill. I want to talk to you a little bit, Representative Benson. Uh, you've gotten a bonding bill done. You've fixed right. JMC. You've gotten a lot done in the early five, six weeks of session. You're turning your attention now to the state budget That's and right. to a budget deficit of about a billion dollars. Right. Uh, what's on the horizon? How are you going to go about balancing this budget? Well, first of all, there was some good news in that uh, uh, receipts were a little higher than we thought. So instead of the $1.2 billion that you hear so much about, it's down to 900 and some million now. Uh, that still means that we have to balance the budget. And um, I think the voters are uh, watching to see uh, whether the legislature can do that. This time, it's my view that uh, we should be able to do that to convince the voters that we are um, being prudent, in spite of the fact that over the last several years we've been cutting budgets. Uh, but I still think it is possible, and I would like to uh, show the voters that we will do that uh, without raising taxes at this point. Uh, it's a recession, and I think uh, we know that conservatives uh, are always opposed to taxes regardless. But uh, many of us on, on the progressive side um, argue that uh, during recession it's not the time to raise taxes. It is time to do things like um, um, bonding bills. And in that way we can uh, create some demand for, uh, for services and, and workers and so forth. So we're at that point. Uh, one of the big issues coming up is health care and education. So we might talk about the health care a little bit. Well, I do. I am curious about that, Representative, because when you do this for the cuts alone, it there are a lot of agencies, a lot of areas where right. you can trim the budget. But K-12 education is about 37 to 40 percent of the budget. Healthcare consumes a significant about That's a third right. of the budget. Yeah. So how do you go about making those cuts without really impacting people's lives, uh, whether in the classroom or whether people who depend on health care or people with disabilities? How yeah. do you go about doing that? Well, first of all, on education, I think it's agreed at this point at least that we're going to try to leave education harmless. Now, that's not quite true because if you factor in inflation, the K-12 education over the last few years has taken about a 17% cut. So before everyone gets too proud of themselves, uh, we should keep that in mind because lots of times you'll hear people say, well, you've cut health care, you've done this and that. It's time for education to take its hit. Uh, well, it has taken its hit already. As far as the health care uh, concern, um, it's really tough, and I guess that's what we're elected to do, uh, to try to uh, find ways for savings that uh, do not really damage the core uh, services that I think everyone, regardless of political stripe, believes we have a moral responsibility to provide. Uh, so that's what we're at, and it's, it's very difficult because, as I said, we've already made some major cuts. And, uh, we might mention a little bit about what's happening nationally with the health care. Well, uh, and I, I want to ask how that would play into it, impact. because I do think that even the governor's budget uh, was counting on the fact that some things are going to happen yeah. nationally that maybe soften the blow here in Minnesota. Right. How would this national health care discussion play into what will happen in Minnesota? Well, there's a couple of items. The first of all, uh, we should remember that the governor's proposal for balancing the budget included the assumption that we would get for the Medicare portion of uh, state expenses, and as everyone probably knows, uh, state contributes to Medicare uh, as well as the federal government. So that's a real impact on our health care. And the governor is hoping for $387 million, I think, uh, something mm -hmm. around there, that that would come from, uh, from the federal government. Unfortunately, that has not passed the U.S. Senate. Mm -hmm. So we're all uh, waiting around here a little bit to see if that comes through, because if it doesn't, then we're going to have some major cuts. But the National Health Insurance Program, if it becomes law, the one that we have in the Senate right now, which has all kinds of flaws, we know, we've heard that debate, uh, would lead to about a $350 million uh, improvement <coughs> excuse me, in the state budget here in Minnesota. And uh, in the next biennium, it would be up to $2 billion, which would be enormous improvement. And also would allow us to get rid of the 2% uh, tax that we put on uh, the health uh, impact fee, whatever the term is for it, uh, that's the fee that goes to Minnesota Care. That would no longer be necessary. And that would be a nice thing because it would reduce taxes, that tax, on health care providers. So uh, in spite of all the controversy uh, for the state of Minnesota, it would be a real boon for us if uh, that health care reform bill gets through and the president signs it into law. 
Well, Representative, a lot happening in the next couple yep. of weeks, so we're going to invite you back to Capital Update. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. This is Charlene Briner with Representative John Benson, and we'll see you next time on Capital Update.